Okay, so now let's go into 3.6 uh, quadratic inequalities, and we're going to talk about solving them and graphing them. And I will forewarn you guys, uh, there's two ways to approach this stuff in the homework. You can do a whole lot of guessing and checking, which will absolutely blow up on the exam, or you can really try to algebraically or graphically learn what these quadratic inequalities are trying to express. Okay, so quadratic inequalities. Let's go back to this picture that we saw last week where we've got this motorcycle um, guy jumping and we get some sort of parabola and we're going to call it ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, so we understand now the function, the quadratic function, and we understand the x-intercepts and how to find them. But what does it mean to turn it into an inequality? What does it mean here on my ax squared plus bx plus c when I add greater than or equal to zero? Well, what that means is that this white space that I have just brought in between the parabola and the x-axis, right, that space is where the parabola is greater than zero. All right, here zero meaning the x-axis, and the parabola is above the x-axis uh, it, during this part of the x-axis, so between the x-intercepts. All right, so let's consider these questions. This is something that comes up a whole lot, you guys. When will Medicare spending exceed $500 million? All right, that's an inequality. At what speeds on dry pavement will, will our car require stopping distances greater than 540 feet? Yet another quadratic inequality. At what production level where will our total revenue at least equal our total cost? All right, if we're dealing with quadratics, which usually our revenue can be quadratic, um, usually our cost is too, um, and this is a perfect example of yet another quadratic inequality. And so you can see in the English how this stuff comes up a lot. And unfortunately, the English isn't, hey, go solve inequality problem 17 on page 204. All right, so we need to understand how to apply the English to the math and vice versa. All right, solving a quadratic inequality. Here's your recipe. Here's your steps. Step one, you're going to solve the corresponding quadratic equation. All right, so at this point, uh, you should be BFFs or besties with the quadratic formula. Um, you should just be able to right away solve for your x-intercepts using the quadratic formula. Step two. Identify the intervals determined by the solutions of the equation. All right, so using uh, these x-intercepts, we're going to write three intervals. All right, and then from there, we're going to use a test value from each interval or inside each interval to actually figure out what our solution set is. Okay, so let's start with... A relatively easy example here, x squared minus x minus 12 less than 0. Step 1, we have to solve the quadratic equation. All right, this is one I am going to factor, but you may, of course, use the quadratic uh, formula. Actually, I guess I am going to use the quadratic uh, formula here. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, I'm plugging in my a1, my b negative 1, and my c negative 12. And once I simplify all that, I'm getting x equals 4 or x equals negative 3. All right, so I have 4 and negative 3 as my x-intercepts, okay? And so using 4 and negative 3, we need to test three intervals. Okay, now, guys, pay attention as to how I wrote my intervals. Our axis, or our real line, runs from negative infinity to positive infinity. And so I'm looking at my x-intercepts, and the first one I come to on the x-axis is negative 3, not 4. So my first interval is negative infinity to negative 3. My second interval is negative 3 to 4. And my third interval is 4 to infinity. Will it always be negative infinity to positive infinity? Usually, unless we're dealing with, in a math setting, it's going to be negative infinity to infinity. There are situations dealing with production um, where maybe we don't go into uh, the, the negative portion of the x-axis. Okay, um, so we've got our three intervals here, and we need to test 
each interval. All right, we're looking for true or false statements. So in this first interval, I need a number that is somewhere in that interval. I could choose negative 4, negative 10. I could even choose the national debt if I wanted to. I just particularly don't want to plug in the national debt. So I go with something simple. I go with negative 4. And notice that I'm plugging it in to my quadratic equation, and I get the number 8. Okay? And I ask myself, is 8 less than 0? Because that's what the inequality is telling me. And, of course, the answer is false or no or heck no, however you want to say it. I go to my second interval. I need a number between negative 3 and 4. And you guys, when you have an interval that includes 0, always choose 0 because it's so darn easy to plug in. And so I plug in 0 and I get negative 12. Is negative 12 less than 0? Yes, it is. All right, and then lastly, I'm going to look at my last interval, 4 to infinity, and I can choose anything in there I want. I could choose a gazillion, but I'm going to stick with 5. So I plug in 5, and I get 8. And again, is 8 less than 0? Well, no, of course it's not. And so we get an answer or a, a solution set of negative 3 to 4. Okay? So here's our answer. All right, now let's, let's take a look at it graphically. Okay, so we did a lot of algebra to figure out that our solution set is negative 3 to 4. All right, here is our quadratic function. Guys, what you're looking at in the purple line is x, f of x equals x squared minus x minus 12. Again, that's the function. You can see our x-intercepts that we solved using the quadratic equation. All right, or the quadratic formula, rather. Okay, so, and what we did is we tested this interval, all right? And we asked ourselves, hey, is the function down here less than zero? Well, no, it's not. We tested this interval. Is the function down here below the x-axis? Why, why, yes, it is. And then we tested this interval, and we asked ourselves, is the function down here below the x-axis? And the answer is no. All right, and so... You can see here that the space between negative 3 and 4, all right, our parabola is below the x-axis. All right, so again, the graph tells us the same thing as the algebra. All right, let's do another example. All right, this one's a little bit more complicated, all right, and we're also, I've changed the sign of the inequality here. All right, so now it reads 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 greater than or equal to 0. So we want to know where is this parabola above the x-axis. All right, just like before, life's on repeat, 50 first dates, we have to solve the quadratic equation. And how are we going to do that? Our beloved quadratic formula. So I'm going to use a equals 2, b is 5, and c is negative 12. And I'm plugging into my quadratic formula. All right, and after a little bit of math or calculator math, I get negative 4 and 3 over 2, or 3 halves. All right, so I have my two x-intercepts now. All right, what am I going to do with my two x-intercepts? Well, I'm going to write three intervals. All right, and again, I'm just going to step through each interval. I need a number between negative infinity and negative 4. And I choose negative 5 because I think that's the easiest. Why don't I choose negative 4? Well, I know that negative 4 is going to give me 0. And because of this inequality, it's not that big a deal. But if we had a strict inequality, negative 4 is not going to tell us anything. All right, now what the heck do I mean by strict inequality? And I'm starting to talk about signs, and now we have brackets. All right, well, notice I am using brackets now on my intervals with the numbers because my inequality is greater than or equal to 0. All right, so I can include my endpoints now. All right, so let's go back to the math. I'm plugging in negative 5 into my quadratic equation, and I get 28. Is 28 greater than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. All right, again, in the middle interval, I do cross 0, so I'm going to take the chance to plug in 0, make my life easy. Is negative 12 greater than or equal to 0? No, it's not. And then lastly, on the last interval, I need a number bigger than 3 over 2, or 1.5. So I'm going to choose 2. I could just as easily have chosen 10, or a gazillion again. 
and I take 2 and I plug it in and I get 6. And again, is 6 greater than or equal to 0? And the answer is yes, it is. So I have two intervals as my answer. And you guys love when you get to union intervals. Um, so here we have a union of the first interval and the third interval as our solution set. All right. Does the graph tell us the same thing as the algebra? Well, again, notice what did we do in algebra? Well, we found these x-intercepts right here, negative 4 and 3 halves. We had this interval, negative infinity to 3 to negative 4. All right, we tested this interval and we asked ourselves, is our parabola up above the x-axis? And yes, it is. All right, again, we tested this interval between our x-intercepts and we asked ourselves, is the parabola above the x-axis? No, it's not. It's down here. And then lastly, we tested from 3 halves to infinity, asking ourselves algebraically, is the graph up here? Yes, it is. And so you can see, as I fill it in with the actual space, again, our parabola is above the x-axis from negative infinity to negative 4 and 3 halves to positive infinity. All right, let's go through a word problem. All right, so a car's required stopping distance, f of x, in feet on dry pavement, I've already told you it's quadratic, but traveling at x miles per hour can be modeled by this quadratic function. It's a kind of yucky quadratic function in terms of easy numbers. How can we use this function to determine speeds on dry pavement requiring stopping distances that exceed 540 feet? All right, so what do we need to solve? Well, we want to solve where is our quadratic function greater than 540. All right, so here's our quadratic inequality. All right, well, it's going to make more sense for us if we subtract 540 and consider this quadratic function greater than 0. So that's all I did down here um, to, to get the last white box down there was to subtract 540 from both sides. All right, now we have our quadratic inequality. How do we solve it? Life's on repeat, Groundhog Day. Take that quadratic function, set it equal to zero. Okay, we set it equal to zero. We go through our quadratic uh, formula here and we get roughly negative 71 or 76. So here I'm, I'm rounding. That's why you see my double tildes or my approximation because we have decimals. We're having to round. So again, I get x-intercepts of roughly negative 71 and 76. All right. And so, hmm, why in the heck did I start at zero? Didn't I just say negative 71 and 76? And yet I look here at the first interval and I have typed 0, bracket 0 to 76. Why in the world would I do that? All right, have I lost it? No, not yet. Well, although Lauren and, and Charisma and Hannah and Ashley would probably disagree. But why am I not looking at negatives? Well, what is x? x is miles per hour, right, guys? That's what it measures, miles per hour. Can we have negative 71 miles per hour? All right. If I'm going in reverse real, real fast, does that mean I'm going negative 71 miles per hour? No, of course not. That's silly talk. All right, so miles per hour start at zero. Zero is stopped. All right, so I'm only using uh, my positive x-intercept in this word problem. So I have bracket zero to 76. I plug in one, and I get a number that is less than zero. All right, so that's not helping me. All right, and then I plug in 80, and here, oops, that should be greater than 0. I get a number that is greater than 0. And so this second interval is true, 76 to positive infinity. Okay, so, and actually let me go back one more time. Again, make sure you understand why we only have those two test intervals. All right. All right, key points to know for quadratic inequalities. How to solve them algebraically. How to solve them graphically. So make sure you understand both ways. Able to set up and solve an application like we just did with stopping distance. 
and understand the similarity of the algebraic and graphic solutions. All right, here's a question for you. Given a positive leading coefficient and x-intercepts of negative 6 and 9, where is the quadratic function greater than 0? So can you answer that? Given a positive leading coefficient, so a is positive, all right, that's telling me the orientation of my parabola, right? So use that orientation, use your x-intercepts, and can you figure out where the quadratic function is greater than zero? Not sure? Feel free to ask me in